Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and I am a 43-year-old board game reviewer. It's my full-time job, and this is a little series uh, explaining about different board games that changed my life to how and help me get to where I'm at now. So today I want to talk a little bit about a couple games, Professor Bodybuilder and Collapse, with an exclamation point. Now, some of you may have looked these games up online and you can't find them. That's because they don't really exist in a published form. But these were the first two games that I felt pretty confident that I designed personally. See, I love playing board games. And I've talked about how my parents bought me some board games. I went to the thrift store to find board games. But at the end of the day, I was still kind of, I have needed this outlet creativity. You know, I wanted to create something on my own. And a lot of kids do this. I can't tell you how many times my kids have brought me, here's a sheet of paper, roll, die, move around the board, and whatever you do, you land on happens. But I was trying to think, can I turn this into my career? I don't know. At the time, I was like, I want to be a board game designer. I read an article that definitely squashed my dream, saying how hard it was to get your board game picked up by a publisher, you know, trying to get in touch with the people at Hasbro or Milton Bradley, Parker Brothers was really difficult. And so I was like, well, I'll try anyway. So I had to use what I had. You know, I didn't have this great network of ways to build things. I think Kinko's was kind of a thing, but not really that strong at the time. But for some reason, my mom would get the occasional piles of just extra stuff. We had the computer paper that went to a dot matrix printer where you pulled it out, it was all attached together. I thought, is there some way I can use that? Someone gave us a ton of manila file folders. So those became my boards. You opened it up and I would draw the board. It was kind of nice. We got index cards that I would cut in half and turn into cards for the card games. And then I would just steal the dice and pieces from other board games that I had gotten from the thrift store. And so Collapse was a game that I made because at the time we ate so many Twinsicles and other Popsicles as a kid. We didn't have a ton of desserts, but for some reason we ate a ton of Popsicles and we had these leftover Popsicle sticks to the point where I would build little forts out of them for my army men and such. And my mom said, oh, well, you can just buy a ton of Popsicle sticks at the store. And so she did. And I thought, can I use these in a game somehow? So I made a game where you built a basic house. It was called Collapse. You went around and you bought sticks and you sold sticks in an economic market on the side. And then there was also you know, add three sticks to your house or do this, but there was also a collapse card which totally smashed your house down, which was tremendously fun to do, although it's really bad game design to have this collapse happen. And, but it was my first foray into game designing. And I designed a few other things. I designed a thing where you went through and got swords and shields and went and fought monsters, a roll and move style game. And then I came upon Professor Bodybuilder. So this was a game in which you had three different body pieces, the head, the middle piece, and the bottom piece. It was Professor Bodybuilder. You were an evil professor building monsters. And I drew, I'm not a great artist, but I drew all sorts of different monsters. I would draw all three parts and I made them all match the same line so you could flip them apart. And the game was about going around on this board and trying to move in different directions. I allowed you when you rolled dice to move and it was a board that went in different directions. I was trying to do things. See, I hadn't played tons of what we call Euro games and all this, so I didn't know a lot. So I was just kind of trying to build off the games that I had played. And I thought, well, you roll a die to move, but why do I have this one circular path? I have a path that goes in different directions and maybe you can get cards and move a certain number of spaces. I stole that from Korea. Careers. And so I made this game. I was very pleased with it. I played it. My dad didn't say he hated it, uh, which I took as a good sign. My parents are very honest. Uh, and my brothers and sisters said it was okay. And I was very proud of this. Now, I don't know what happened to both of these games. Um, they got thrown away, I'm sure, as time went by. I moved on to more published games and I didn't take them with me when I went to college. And I just, these changed my life though because they pushed me in that game design direction. When I first went to college, we had to give a speech on how to do something. Uh, and I was in Speech 101 and they said, give a design. And I said, I'll do how to design a board game which is very presumptuous if you think about it, but at the time I thought, meh, I know how to design board games. That's my thing. 
I'm the board game guy. And so I got up and talked about it, and I remember distinctly saying that landing on a spot that causes you to lose a turn is a really bad idea. I remember putting that in there. And here, 20 years later, I'm still saying the same thing. Actually, 20 years later, 25 years later, I'm still saying the same thing. But these two games, which never got published, never will get published, no one has seen them, I have no pictures of them to show you, uh, but they definitely changed my life and pushed me down the idea of, hey, maybe you could design your own games and, thought, and got me to think more about game design as time went by. <laughs>